Hi, I'm Misty Velasky, and this is Ojai Valley News In-Depth. Joining me today is Bob Daddy from Ojai Flow. Thanks for joining us. Well, glad to be here. Now, earlier this week, a group of local citizens went to Casitas Municipal Water District and asked them to take over via eminent domain Golden State Water, and you were a big part of that. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> a big part. We have, we have uh, seven people in Ojai Flow. Mm -hmm. um, Pat McPherson is the chair. Mm -hmm. Uh, Richard uh, Hages does all the technical. He understands how this thing works. Dale Hansen does communications and she does liaison with groups for us. She's part of the Greens. Mm -hmm. We have Stan Green who's part of uh, the Citizens to Preserve Ojai Past and he's a board member of the Sanitation District here in Ojai. We have Lou Torres, who is a CPA, and he's one of our morning Rotarians, like Pat and I are Rotarians. And uh, again, Richard, and, and that's our entire group. We added about a month and a half ago, uh, Ryan Blatz, who did the presentation to our citizen group, and he did a really bang up job. Mm -hmm. So that's who we are. Now you've had quite uh, a few meetings, lots of hours of research. So tell me, uh, why are you involved in this? Are you a Golden State customer? I'm a Golden State customer. Uh, coincidentally, I'm also a Casitas customer since I pay taxes to the Casitas Water District and have always paid taxes. Um, quite a bit of time. We've spent well over 500 hours. We've met every single week for the last 10 and a half months as a group, um, and so we've done an extensive amount of work, yes, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, why did you decide to approach Golden, I'm sorry, why did you decide to approach Casitas Municipal Water District as opposed to say Miners Oaks or Ventura River? Well, we're in the Casitas Water District. Mm -hmm. The Ordinance 382, which was written by the city, May 25th of 1967, gave it that the day it was published in the Ohio Valley News, by the way, gave a franchise to then Southern Cal Waters, which is now Golden State Waters, gave them a franchise to service a portion of Ojai, and they also serve a portion in the county. Hmm. So we actually have three water purveyors in this in the city of Ojai. Mm -hmm. And I guess one of the reasons is, is that Golden State is more than double the rate of either of the two that serve citizens in the city of Ojai. Wow. It's quite a bit. Quite a bit. Now, uh, we talk about eminent domain here. Uh, tell me, does Golden State Water have any legal recourse? Can they say to Casitas, no, we don't want you to take us over? I'm positive they'll say that. I'm not going to answer legal questions, but... In Ordinance 382, which is public information, mm -hmm. there is a section that's under Section 8, mm -hmm. and it specifically speaks in that franchise agreement. First of all, giving the city eminent domain, mm -hmm. but they're within the Casitas, and we're going to let Casitas figure out what they need to do and how they need to do it. What our job is is to show that we have overwhelming support from the community, mm -hmm. and with 4,700 voters here, our goal is to get 2,500 people to show up, sign a petition. They're actually users of Casitas Water and would be in this special revenue service district that we're proposing. Mm -hmm. So essentially it would be a petition that you would take to Casitas, and what would happen then? Well, Casitas is then going to have to evaluate our proposal. Mm -hmm. Do we have the right rates? Do we have the right infrastructure rates? Have we authorized enough revenue for the legal fees? Is it going to work out with them? We're, what we're bringing is a bulk of taxpayers that property taxpayers that pay to Casitas. We have our own water supply. We're going to authorize a revenue stream for them that won't interfere with their current operations or their current customers. Mm -hmm. So we won't raise any of the current customers it will also not be a property bond as we normally see. Property bonds are liens against the property. I don't particularly care for liens against the property. Mm -hmm. This will be a surcharge on usage. Mm -hmm. The more you use, the more you pay. Yes. The less you use, the less you pay. 
with Golden State getting a third of all the revenue for the base meter charge now, it's impossible to conserve. As one of our 90-year-old residents said, I'll shower less. But if she has a $120 meter rate every two months, before you drink the first glass of water, before you flush the toilet the first time, you're already at this very high rate. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason. In water, they're non-aggregated. Now, I know that's a little bit of a strange word. But, Mr., you've got a place. What do you pay for your electric meter? Well, of course, you pay nothing. You pay for the what, what you use. Mm -hmm. What do you pay for your gas meter? Well, you pay nothing for the gas meter. That's not in with the charges. You pay for what you use. With Golden State, we, in this non-aggregation or aggregated use, we have to pay 100% of all costs and the entire burden of the entire operation mm. that serves just Ojai. If that were true with the natural gas, we wouldn't have natural gas. We're too small to sustain an entire operation. So while well, the electric company and the gas company, when they do improvements in the valley, they go ahead and spread it out of their entire enterprise. When Golden State, to their defense, in, increases or updates or upgrades our system, it can only be charged the small amount of rate pairs, mm -hmm. the 2,886 rate pairs we have here. So they plan a $27 million upgrade over the next 20 years. 10 years, excuse me. Well, we're going to pay 100% of that. It won't be spread out anywhere. Mm -hmm. And as Golden State serves one out of every 31 people in the state of California, if you're the smallest area, you pay a disproportionately high charge, and that's why our rates are more than double. Mm -hmm. But you want uh, to have Casitas come and help you to prevent that from happening. So tell me about the bond. Um, I understand that you're talking about a $33 million bond. Where would that money come from? What it would do is Casitas has the right to go ahead and get a bond. Mm -hmm. And the repayment of that bond would come through our water flow. Mm -hmm. Right now we can buy the same amount of water, our 2,886 users, the same amount of water through Casitas would cost us a little over $1.8 million. That same water for the 2,800 users is over $5 million with Golden State. Wow. Now, they've operated this system, as their general manager said, for 80 years. And you'd think, after 80 years of experience, and the only for-profit water company in the, in the valley, and we have six water companies, one of six is for-profit, that 80 years of experience would have allowed them to have enough experience to not be twice as much as the other purveyors. The other thing we have a problem with is the way water comes and, and how it's purchased. Golden State purchases water from Casitas. So I pay for the water they purchase from Casitas and they resell it to me. Hmm. And I pay property taxes to Casitas for them to resell their water to me. And with the 130 plus leaks they had last year, which is one leak, more than one leak, every three days. After 80 years of experience, I think they've run out of ability to provide a good, reliable, affordable system. 80 years should be enough time to and, make this thing work. And in those 80 years, there have been a whole lot of improvements on those infrastructure, on those pipes. So how much of that $33 million bond would go towards improving the infrastructure, and how long would it take to see those changes be enacted? Casitas is a pretty large, pretty large organization. Casitas has got 150 miles of pipes. Golden State in this area has 40 miles of pipes. Mm -hmm. Casitas runs and pumps water up to a mutual water company we call Senior Canyon, which mm -hmm. goes all the way up to um, Thatcher School, and then they run all the way over to Faria Beach, so they're all the way down to the beach. Mm -hmm. They're a very large wholesale supplier for 
Ventura itself. They have the expertise. The enterprise for the local casitas has got three times the revenue annually that Golden State does. Mm -hmm. On a regular water maintenance, uh, I can produce you some documents where it, it really depends on what we need first. But as for the last rate case where Golden State asked for uh, a number of items to be improved, the Department of Rate Advocates rejected a number of items and pipes that they wanted to replace, stating the reason as showing no leaks within the last five years. What Golden State has done in the last 11 years is they put $1.9 million into the infrastructure to replace pipes. Mm -hmm. When they started that 11 years ago, 15.1% of all the water leaked, as though it were metered water, it leaked. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, 15% of the water they buy comes from Casitas. But since the Casitas water needs to be pumped up and it's a resale of water, that amounts to about 25% of the cost. So is there an actual dollar amount that we're looking at for the improvement of the sure. infrastructure? Well, a couple of things would happen. If you could plug the leaks and save 15% of the water, mm -hmm. that would save us 25% of the rate, which is $5 million a year. That's one and a quarter million. Mm -hmm. What we've allocated to give you a direct answer is $10 million immediate through the bond, we believe, should be used to repair all and any identified problems. Mm -hmm. And there are identified problems. Sure. We have some sections of this pipe that have got poly, which is a plastic, which is failing. We have poly sections that were put in, and I call it a patchwork, as small as 18 feet section. Mm -hmm in very, very important areas. 18 feet. That kind of shows the different patchwork. Some of the things are redundant. The Casita system has a loop that loops the entire valley all the way to the east end and back. So a number of these Golden State pipes really can be abandoned or put on standby and not used because of the systems that Casita uses now to pump water through our system and through the Senior Canyon system. Mm -hmm. Four million dollars, up to four million dollars would be ad, uh, allowed for uh, legal, and then the rest for the water plant is what that's called. Mm -hmm. And we feel that that's adequate. And when would all of this sort of come to fruition? How long is this going to take? Uh, I am on a different time frame than some of my uh, fellow uh, workers in the Ojai Flow. Um, they're optimistic and think that within 30 to 60 days, they can have 2,500 signatures that we feel would be adequate mm -hmm. to take back to the Casitas board to let them know that what we would have is a true majority should a bond issue be set before the people to vote on, that we would have an overwhelming support and we would pass the bond. Mm -hmm. Now, if folks need some more information about this, where can they go? Uh, we have ohiflow.com. Uh, that's one of the places we will be around in lots of areas. Uh, we're signing up uh, people to help us put in yard signs, hand out pamphlets, sign petitions. Um, we are looking for some small amounts of support financially so we can continue to run ads in the paper, make more materials and no more signs. And again, ohiflow.com is the place that uh, they can most easily go. We have phone numbers there. We have uh, uh, people's names and phone numbers to ask individual specific questions. And uh, we will get back to everybody. Thank you. I appreciate your time, Bob. This is Bob Daddy of Ohio Flow. I'm Misty Velasky. This has been Ohio Valley News In Depth.